Welcome back to the channel. We are here once again with our Dell 3880, which for 2021 was the cheapest brand new Dell I could buy in like a standard desktop form factor case size, like not a slim one. And when I say cheapest, I also mean specifically this one, like the least amount of RAM, no SSD, none of that stuff. And I have been going through the process of upgrading the whole thing. There is a playlist for this thing if you would like to get caught up to this point that I will link down in the description as well as a little flag up there. And today we have hit the point where we're going to cross into the completely absurd, sort of. We are going to attempt to transplant the innards of this guy into that guy. So we are going to recase our Dell. And also, yo dog, I heard you liked upgrades with your upgrades. So we're going to go with a Blu-ray drive in the new case because the drive we have here isn't going to transfer in very well. So we're going to bang that in there quick while we're at it. I'm going to start off by saying this upgrade on its own is not one I would suggest for most people. I don't think this is going to go very well, first of all. And my goal is to just get that in that box functioning and that's it. And I will say right up front, I'm kind of cheating because I could actually put this entire computer inside this case because this is a full size ATX mid tower. So it's got a heap of room in it. So I should be able to get that done somehow, but I don't guarantee full functionality. Like a lot of people have mentioned to me in the past, you know, this front IO, you're not going to be able to get to work in another case. And I understand all that. And I really don't care for IO. You can always just plug a USB cord into one of these, an extension cord and just run it out the back and then just have like an SD card reader or whatever you need off to the side of your computer. If you are on such a firm budget that you have to preserve the Dell board into another case, then I think those are reasonable exceptions to be made. For anybody else who has like basically this much more money, I suggest you do the case and motherboard at the same time. So then we would just be harvesting the Dell for drives and RAM and CPU and all that. Put it in a new motherboard, put the new motherboard in a new case and we're done. And at the end of that, we could potentially, and I will, end up with two different computers. But this guy is our Hail Mary. Hopefully we don't have to do this today. I think I can beg, steal, lie, and cheat this board into that case and kind of get away with it. Before we get much deeper, I want to spend a couple of minutes talking about this specific case and why I picked it. And there's no particular reason why anyone would or would not use this case. It just hits every checkbox for basically all of my viewers. This case should be a decent one size fits all solution for everybody. So this guy is a Thermaltake Versa H22 and I will link it down in the description for you. It has come in and out of stock several times over the last several months like many things have. So you may have to be patient if you decide that you like this specific case and you'd like all these features. First and foremost, this thing was pretty much dirt cheap. It was pretty much the least expensive case I could find with the options I wanted. The time I bought it, it was 50 bucks. You can probably buy a less expensive case, but I can't imagine how much less expensive. So we're getting down into the pretty low cost stuff. This case is not perfect, but it's got a lot of good things going for it that I definitely wanted. First of all, it has external drive bays, so we can put an optical drive in it, which I know is something a lot of my subscribers want because the optical drive video has been very, very popular. More and more cases are coming without these, especially high performance gaming cases. Uh, people just don't care about having an optical drive. So those cases end up being about probably six or seven inches shorter than this one. Another thing I wanted would be a case with plenty of room and fins and all that good stuff for ventilation. The whole front of this thing is all mesh. So even the drive bay covers are all just mesh. You can see that mesh continues all the way down the front of the case and all that good stuff. On the top, we have provisions for more cooling fans, uh, probably also water cooling, which isn't something I'm gonna get into. In the back here, it also came with a 120 millimeter fan in the case already, which is handy. It's probably not the highest quality fan on earth, but it's got one. You can also see all the slot covers are ventilated. Got our big hole down at the bottom for our ATX PSU. And I definitely wanted an ATX case because the ATX power supply is the cheapest option. Power supply I bought was also about 50 bucks. And then down at the bottom, there's also more holes and a filter underneath, which isn't really all that robust, but just so there's even more ventilation for our PSU. So she is certainly a holy monster. And from inside of the case, it's probably a little bit easier to see all that ventilation. You can see all the holes shooting out of the front, bottom, back, big fan, holes on top of the case. So this thing is just a big box for air to blast through. Another thing I felt was very important was I wanted a large number of drive bays because again, one of the most common questions I get with a 3880 is how do I add extra hard drives to it? And I've had people want to put like five or six hard drives in their 3880. So I want to get something with a boatload of bays. This guy has four internal three and a half inch bays, four internal two and a half inch bays, which I believe you could double these up 
and these are on caddies. So you could put several drives on one of these caddies just with double back tape or whatever you wanted. You could do a lot of things. And then our three external drive bays that you could also put all kinds of things in. So I would say between this combination of stuff, if you worked hard enough at it, you could probably put about 20 drives in this thing. Not saying anybody ever would, but you could. And each segment of these drive bays are riveted into the case. It would have been nice if they were screwed in, but this thing's so cheap that I can understand. But if you wanted to, you could grind the heads off the rivets on the bottom and you could grind these rivets off and pull all these bays out of the thing and then have room for the world's most hilariously huge graphics card as it is now without doing any of that. And it would, of course, depend on your motherboard where your card was really going to land. But we are right at 320 millimeters to the back wall to these two and a half inch bays. If you wanted to cut those bays out of it, which wouldn't be a very big deal, you're at like 420 millimeters to the front bezel. I don't know how big they make graphics cards, but 420 millimeters is approaching half a meter, you know, or about two feet. So that seems like plenty. And then just for reference, it is set up uh, with drillings for ATX and micro ATX, maybe a couple other ones. But where the motherboard lives, you've got eh, 275 by, I don't know, the whole height of the case, I guess. Well, down to the power supply, about 275 squared. So that should fit just about anything, I would hope. This Asus B560 board is one of the largest I could find, and I did that on purpose. And the board in its packaging almost fits in this case, so it'll be fine. So finding a way to mount our, by contrast, really tiny Dell motherboard should not be that hard. May have to drill a couple holes or something like that. I'm gonna try and void it if I can, but we'll see. So in moderately more than a nutshell, that is why I went with this case. It should do anything any of you out there want it to do, except be as small as the Dell case. If you wanna go to a standalone case and a standalone motherboard and move away from the restrictions of the Dell, but you don't wanna commit this much space to it, you certainly can. You can buy a micro ATX case, you can buy an ITX case. There are cases smaller than this, but they're not gonna have all the features this has, like the external drive bays and all that. If you don't care about those features and space is your thing, you can do smaller than this. So gigantic, cools well, should make everybody happy, was dirt cheap. Those are the main reasons we've got this guy. I'm probably not going to dive any more deeply on this specific case unless something comes up where I feel I need to, because everything I'm gonna do from this point forward should be the same regardless of what case you decide you would like. So with all that said, let's get right into the cheating right away. One of the things I anticipated being an issue is the power button for the 3880. And I've seen schematics and stuff online that this is some sort of proprietary power button and all that stuff. I would really prefer not to mess with it if I don't have to. In my head, I realize that somewhere in here, it is just two contacts that make contact. And that really is all any switch should be. So if I wanted to solder things together and all that, and maybe I'll need to, I actually could do that, but I'm gonna try not to. Plus in our power supply video, you guys saw that with a traditional ATX power supply, it's never actually off. To turn it all the way off, you're gonna have to do it with an outlet strip anyway. So like one of those guys right back there with a power switch on it. There are bio settings in here where I should be able to control how it behaves when power is removed. And one of those settings is automatic power up on resumption of power. So I'm hoping I can cheat my way into not even worrying about this power button. Let's get this guy fired off and we'll see if I can. So we're gonna hit our power button. I believe we want delete right away. Deleter F12, don't remember. We're gonna come down to bio setup. Uh, power management? AC recovery. How the system will behave when AC power is restored after a power loss. This is exactly what we wanna look for. System power is on after AC power is restored. That is what we want. So we're gonna hit apply. Okay, exit. Alrighty, so she's powered up normally, still in the Dell case and all that. I'm just gonna shut it down. And now I'm gonna reach back, flip my outlet strip off. And when I flip it back on, it's gonna power up just for a few seconds, but I'm hoping that continues on. So that's normally how it would behave. Hmm, normally this thing would come up and boot for like three or four seconds, do like a little post thing after it's removed from power, but it didn't this time. I have to research more deeply. Alrighty, so it appears it does work the way I want it to. You just can't do it right away. So right now I'm just gonna shut it down. You can see it was on. Give it a moment there. It's shut down. I'm gonna kill the power switch. And if I flip it back on right away, it doesn't do anything. What I found is I have to wait about 10 seconds. So one 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000, four 1,000, five 1,000, six 1,000, seven 1,000, eight 1,000, nine 1,000, 10 1,000. Now it works. So far so good on that. I may have to move this power button with the motherboard, I'm not sure yet, but we don't need to use it, which is awesome. So now we're inside the 3880, and the next thing I need to do 
is see if it will repeat this behavior with the power switch disconnected entirely. And right there's the connector for it, and right there it even says Power SW on the motherboard, which was nice of them. With the hard drive installed, it might be a little tricky to get to. Uh, actually, that's not a locking connector, so I can just pull it right off, which I just did. So now the power switch is completely disconnected. Let's see if it still boots when I apply power. It booted. We'll see if it goes all the way. Or at least it powered up. But it was not the perfect solution I was hoping for. It came up and told me, hey, your power button's broken, which is like the dumbest warning on the planet. I mean, the thing turned on. But okay, let's just hit continue. It's gonna boot. So that's awesome. Let's see if it does it every time or if it just did it the first time. I got a feeling it's probably an every time kind of thing. Yep, it's gonna do it every time. To eliminate that message, you would need to move your power switch. I think that's riveted in, so I don't think I'm gonna wanna be doing that. I'll take a deeper look here in a moment. So I'm not sure what's gonna become of that situation just yet, but we're close enough to our objective here that I'm just gonna go ahead and gut this thing the whole way down. So the first thing I'm gonna do is remove this front bezel. It's pretty simple. Little pull tabs, off she comes. Bit on this front like IO shield. There's a bracket here, 632 screw in it. I'm not actually sure if I need to do this, but I'm going to. It looks like there's another one right down here. Okay, that just comes off. Then it looks like I'll need to pull that guy to release a bracket that's supporting the board out here at the card reader. I'm going to need to remove my hard drive, which you may or may not have, uh, just so I have enough access to get the board out. So again, just some 632s and some wiring. I will dewire it here briefly, or I suppose quickly. It's the word I was looking for. And if you want to see most of these steps in any more details, the videos in the playlist I slowed down. This one is going to be long enough that I'm not going to hit every single screw with as much detail as I would in a simpler video. I'm gonna assume if you're this far down the rabbit hole, you kind of know a little bit about what you're doing. All right, hard drive's out. At least for the time being, I'm gonna hope I can leave my optical drive in. I'm gonna take this fan shroud out. And honestly, we may or may not reuse that when we move it over to the other board. Pop my video card out. Take the power supply harness off of the board. So we won't be needing that where we're going. Disconnect the SATA cord from the optical drive. Actually, power as well, because it stays with the motherboard. I think we're good to start pulling motherboard screws. It right, looks like we have one there, 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 and there. And we may have to remove our heat sink. I'm not sure. I think those screws go all the way through to the case on the other side. I will get them pulled and let you know. I might have missed a couple. There's actually another one right here underneath the card reader. There's one up there in the center and one down there in the center too. Another one right in front of this card slot. Missed him too. They really freaking put the screws to this thing literally. There's eight screws in this motherboard. I did, as you can see, remove the CPU cooler. So I was trying to figure out what I was doing wrong. And this thing is still screwed in pretty good. So I'm probably still missing something. I'll have to fidget around and see what I'm not seeing. So I've been messing with this thing for a while and the board is still pretty tight in there. So I did something I really hate doing and that is refer to the manual. Dell actually documents these pretty nicely. And if you're not a moron, there's actually an inscription here in the case that says push to release. And right there you can see it. So you need to push down in the middle of this SD card bracket and you heard it click. Now that's free to roam. And now I can actually take that card reader off of the motherboard itself. You know, for all the complaining that um, some folks like to do about Dell, stuff like that is really handy. I'm just too dumb to read it half the time. But now I should be able to just pull in here and disconnect it, it's on a socket. There we go, so just plugs in. And the board has been tight down here. I'm hoping, yeah, there we go. That gave me enough freedom of motion to just get the thing on out of there. I also panicked and took the SSD off of it, which I don't think I really needed to do. Something I am going to need to do is get down here on the front and take our Wi-Fi antennas with us, because we're gonna want those. And I'll bet these will work just fine, just flopping around the inside of the other case. The dwelling I am in is pretty small, so I'm not asking a whole lot of my Wi-Fi distance. Those are in there shockingly better than I thought they'd be. So it turns out these are actually glued on mildly. There's, I pried this one off. There's some like double back tape. So I'm going to guess they do that as an assembly aid. As you can imagine, it's not handy for disassembly. There we go. Sticky backed as well. I was kind of hoping they would fit through those screws or this hole, but they're not going to. So I'm going to actually have to disconnect the wires from the card. I'll just take a minute to observe the black one was on that end of the card and the white one was on that end. I don't know that it actually matters. There's a tiny little Phillips head in here. And there's a little plastic cover over the wires, so we actually have to pull the card to remove the wires, I think. Yeah, so now we can pop those. The plastic cover is kind of handy. There's a, 
I have problems on laptops sometimes with these little antenna leads popping off the card. So we've rescued our antennas and I believe we have freed our board. Come on, baby. Come on. Don't be shy. Seeing all there is to see now. All right, empty case. And as I suspected, the cooler mounts into the case. That's from what I've read, pretty common on Dell builds. So if we wanna use that cooler, we'll probably need to come up with some nuts or something. Time to start looking at how to do this on our new guy. And just kind of for safekeeping, I just put the card reader back in. I just reconnected it to its connector. So it won't hurt anything for it to just be chilling out there. If it'll fit in the new case, that's great. We probably, we're not gonna use it, but it's probably just one less thing for it to complain about. And I put the Wi-Fi card back in and reconnected the antennas and all that. And we'll probably just let those guys freewheel inside the case when we get there. I uh, put the SSD back in it too. But all in all, I think now we are ready to go. Oh, and I took the wires off of it too, just so I wouldn't bend something funny and break one of the connectors or something. So now I feel like we're ready to go experiment with our new case. Nearly forgot. Let's see if we can harvest our power switch out of there so it just doesn't complain every time we try to boot it up. Looks like it's just, yep, a little locking paw. Try and get under it and release the other one. Yep, right out of the hole. Of course, the stickers are gonna hold us up. Hilarious. Anyway, you get the idea. Oh, wait, there we go. So we got that. We will just plug him right back into the board where he came from. And now it shouldn't complain about that anymore either. Uh, just FYI, if this hadn't worked out this way, what I was going to do was probably just extend all these wires up to the power switch location on the new case and just graft a mechanical solution, probably just like with hot glue or something, just so that button would push this button and not really screw with much. But anyway, I think we're gonna get away with murder there, no problem. Now we're ready for our new case. So if I wasn't clear before, I'm not worried about any of this front IO on the new case either. If you really wanted to, you could adapt like the USB pin headers back out into regular USB connectors and plug them into the board on this thing and you could do all that stuff. I'm not worried about the LED power light, none of that. You could do all of those things if you wanted. All I want to hopefully get this thing in here, get our graphics card to line up on one of these slots and it would be nice to put a screw in the board. And actually it looks like I've got a fair amount of real estate to wiggle around and mess with. So we shall see. But I'm just gonna take a minute to kind of stand over this and look down in the holes and see if anything's looking promising at all. All right, so the best we're gonna be able to do is still not very good. I'll flip this over in a minute. I just don't wanna disorient you just yet. This is still the top of the case and I can actually put one screw in the board right there. So I can put one riser and one screw in. The problem is my GPU doesn't hit any of the card slots in that position. If I were truly committed to this, I could remove the slot bracket from the GPU. It just screws on. So just let it free float. Take a Dremel or a hacksaw or whatever you wanted and cut this bar out and it would actually fit. So right there it is in the slot or on the connector and you can see that it's just right dead center where it should not be. And that is the only position I can get it to work in. Uh, moving it around anywhere else, it won't hit any other screws. Frustratingly, it is really close to a standard drilling. Those three screws at the top are probably all within a half inch of being correct for ATX, which is just annoying or micro ATX. This corner screw down here would almost also fit a riser location, but whatever, you know, kind of standard is, you know, the Dell thing. All in all, this is still going better than I actually expected it would. Now I have the case flipped upside down to try and give you an angle, but that hole goes on that riser post, or at least that's the idea. We'll put a riser in there and screw it down. And then you can see that one just barely misses and that guy just barely misses the next one almost a standard drilling. This feels like a great time to once again mention that this is a dumb idea. If you wanna go this far, just try and save up the extra money to get a standard motherboard and not do this. I wanna say you can get a socket 1200 motherboard for as little as 90 bucks. So probably worth your time to do that. This is more just for fun. So I had a good look around and thought about some things and now I've got some overnight parts coming from the Amazon. And when they get here, we will take another look. But in the meantime, I'm gonna address the CPU cooler situation because it did indeed screw in to the Dell case and we're not gonna have that option. I could of course use the Intel cooler that came with the i7 from the last video, but I'm going to assume that anybody doing this would be on a shoestring enough budget that you would not have that cooler and you would want to reuse your Dell cooler. So that's what I'm gonna try and do. So what I have here are some M3 nuts. 
and some M4 washers, and I may actually have to go stack some washers up. And the idea is we are just gonna bolt the thing on. I am not gonna bother to repaste it because this machine is going to be on for about 10 minutes before I undo all this stuff. Like I told you guys, this is not actually a good idea and I'm not gonna leave mine this way. Well, this is interesting. Or perhaps not, because on the Dell board, those bosses actually come up through the board and these, they don't go down through. I wonder if I can, oh yeah, I can push on the springs enough to make it happen, I think. Obviously don't wanna break anything trying to make that happen. It is gonna be fidgety to do though. Alrighty, so we'll see if we can get an angle that makes everybody happy. Get a washer slipped on there. Get a nut started. Let's see if I can get its friend back here to do the same thing. Come on, meow. There we go. Things are gonna get tricky for these others because I'm actually going to have to spring load them to get them up. And I also like don't wanna snap my motherboard in half because unbelievably on eBay right now, these Dell boards cost more than the board I bought to replace it. Also, I'm not left-handed, so this is fun. There we go. Got one more. Try and get ram jammed on. There we go. So it's on there. I'm gonna say those are probably pretty tight because they had to compress the springs quite a bit to get it on there. But all the same, give them a few more rounds, flip it over and see about doing it right. Actually, they don't feel all that tight. And I'm just holding the nut with my fingers. So they're all on there and you can see that's about how much spring preload I have. And what I did here, I just set it up so about one full thread is exposed from each of those through the nuts. So they're all pulled down evenly. They shouldn't be putting any undue stress on the board or anything, but there should also be plenty of spring preload on it just so it doesn't uh, get loose or vibrate or anything like that. So with that, I think we're done there for now. So my parts have come from the Amazon. In fact, they've come a couple times because I've kind of been tinkering around with this thing for a little while, trying to come up with something I like. And the good news is, I think I came up with something that doesn't require any drilling. And I kind of put that on myself as an extra challenge after I started really noodling this over. I just see if I could do it really, and I think I can. Even better than that though, is I can make both of the slots line up. So if you were interested in doing this, so you can have like 20 drives, you have room for another SATA controller if you wanted to. So I'll give you an overview of what's going on here and then I'll kind of take it back out of there so you can see what's going on a little bit better. But first of all, I just have one of the risers that came included in the hardware kit for the case installed right here. And the goal of that is going to be to just pinch the board down right there with a screw and a plastic washer. Not really to get it tight, but just so it has a shelf to stand on. The graphics card actually helps hold it in too because it will end up installed in this slot and then screwed in. Then right here, here, here and over here, I actually have plastic risers installed. So little nylon risers with little nylon nuts that hold them all on there to just use as a standoff to the board. And then as our final mechanical securing, I'm just gonna end up taking this zip tie and wrapping it around that portion of the board around the other side of the case. Cause on this case, both sides come off, which is what you'll find in most normal cases that aren't, you know, a Dell case or whatever. But before we go that far, there are some locations where the board is hard touching the case, like pretty much this whole face, those three bumps up there that we saw are the three risers in the case for the ATX. I think maybe there's a riser over here. What I'm gonna do on all those locations is something I've threatened to do a lot of times in different videos, and that is to break out the 3M VHB tape. This stuff is just heavy duty automotive grade double back tape. That's gonna do two things. It's gonna help hold the board in and it's going to make sure it's electrically isolated from the steel chassis of the case itself. So we will just pluck this guy out of here. And there you can see the locations that I'm gonna apply that VHB. So it'll be, you know, here, 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 here. Probably just a strip there. In fact, you can see I've had the board in out so many times right there that I've kind of scratched the paint. So I know that the board hits hard there. Yeah, other than that, shouldn't be a big deal. Then just add a little bit more clarity about what's going on here on the board. There's the nylon standoffs I'm talking about. So right there in the corners, little nylon nuts. And those risers actually are threaded on the other side. So what I could do if I really wanted to is drill the case in all of those locations and actually bolt it in from the back as well. I just decided to skip that to try and make it a little bit simpler for anybody else who might want to do it because not everybody has a drill and drill bits and all that good stuff. So if we can do it without it, we'll do it that way. So here on the back, you can see the four locations that I ran with. And those are pretty much the only locations where this works. 
Those risers all just came out of this kit, which of course I'll link all the materials down in the description. And those are all the second to shortest size available in the kit. So these are the M8 plus six height. So that means this portion here is eight millimeters tall and the threaded portion is six millimeters tall. And that's what I used in all those locations. So now I think the move is just to get our VHB tape applied. And this stuff can be a little tricky to deal with. This roll is also really old. So I never know what I'm really gonna get here. And this is also half inch wide, I think. So I'm just gonna cut them about a half inch long too. And I'm just gonna put little squares on all of those stamped standoffs. And then I think just a strip right along here and also right there just to be sure. And that's what that looks like. One tip I'll give you is to go ahead and peel the backing off while it's still on the roll and cut your little squares out with the backing taken off because dealing with a little half inch by half inch piece of this crap and getting the backing off is a nightmare. We've got that behind us. The next thing to do is just get the board slid in, but we need to be a little careful here because once that tape gets activated, you know, it kind of is what it is. It's a kind of a one-time shot. So I don't want to apply any pressure to anything until I'm pretty sure about what's going on. I know roughly like that is what I want it to look like. The real decider here of exact positioning is the GPU because it has to hit this slot in the back of the case. My tape's already getting a little sticky. Okay, it looks like I'll be able to get a screw in the slot right there. So now I am gonna just apply some pressure to the board, get it stood off. I'll go ahead and put the screw in the slot cover back here. And these screws were included with the case kit. Alrighty, it actually looks like the board's a touch crooked. I've maybe pushed it down a little too much already. Just now I can still fix that. There we go. Yep. She's in there pretty straight now. So I'll just give her a light push again. Just why not? And here you can see our one standoff is just barely on the edge of the board, which is perfect. So we're going to take a screw that was included in the case hardware and I have a plastic washer on it that came out of my nylon hardware kit. I'm just going to put that there as a shelf. So right there, it's snug. That's all I want. It's not tight at all. So it is just a shelf to help support the weight of the board once we pick the case back up. Speaking of, it is about that time. So the last fancy move we've got to make is to get our zip tie ready because I'm just going to wrap it right around there from the other side. And right now without the zip tie, the board is actually surprisingly secure just from the VHB tape. So I'm actually applying a little bit of resistance. I just heard it pop off at the front actually when I pulled right there. It's pretty secure. Obviously you're not gonna have any IO shield to use back here because this is a proprietary Dell IO, but it all lines up really nice. So you can access all your ports and everything else and is actually much better than I had thought it would go. We're just gonna run a zip tie right around there and you can see the VHB tape pad that we installed before to keep that from being an electrical issue. And that's also where our power button's chilling and our card reader. Swoop it around the case. And the goal here is to not get this tight. We just want it to be snug. And what I've got there is, oh, I thought what I had there was plenty, but it was not. I kind of got myself messed up with where I put my zip tie at. I really don't like dragging it across the board like that. I may have to cut this and try again. The problem I've got is this nubbin guy here isn't going to allow it to get tight enough to actually suck up onto the case right there. So what I would like to do is move that engagement down to somewhere like there and then I can actually tighten it down. So I probably am going to go get another zip tie and try over. So snip that guy out of there and think a little more carefully about what I'm doing this time. <laughs> and this zip tie is dramatically shorter than the last one I had, which makes this a little bit more difficult to. Oops. <laughs> uh oh. Regroup. So it was a little bit fidgety, but I did manage to get my zip tie on it right where I wanted. I accidentally did kind of tuck the power cord in there too, or the on off button in there too, but that's all right. The big thing I was watching out for is I did have to run it kind of around these two caps. You can see it's got a little bit of an arc to it, but it's not on there all that tight, but the board isn't going to just fall out. That upper corner, when I tightened down this side, kind of popped off the VHB tape, but that's okay. Again, we're just looking for this to not fall out. And again, this is a dumb idea anyway. This is just for funsies. But it's in there and it's going to work. So I think the next thing I'm going to do is drop the power supply in it, which should not be any kind of big deal because that's actually meant to go in this case. In fact, from here on out, assuming that nothing's actually broken, this should all be really smooth sailing. I am noticing that the card reader is kind of canted on an angle. I sort of jammed it down when I put the zip tie on it. It's probably not the greatest thing in the world. I should have probably wrapped some electrical tape or something around that so it doesn't short anything on the board. <sighs> I'm debating how much I care. Uh, yeah, I should probably do something different there. 
maybe I'll just take it off altogether and see if I can make something work. Yeah, I think you can see it like spring back when I did that. So that's not awesome. So I'm just gonna remove it. Actually, I think it would have been fine because I think it was just buried up against the audio jack. So that's all right. I'll grab some more zip ties and I will see if I can still get something on there to get it tight. But just running it there on the board actually does seem to give it a much better grip, which sort of surprises me. And we'll just plug the card reader in on top of it just so we don't get any boot up errors or anything. This thing is like solid now. Happy accident, I guess. So we are good. Now we're ready for our PSU. Just installs from the inside with our fan down. We will need to put four screws through the back. I believe I can source them from the hardware bag that came with the case. Yeah, I think the screws that came with the case are okay. Just this black paint or whatever they've got on them make them go in a little difficult at first. So they don't feel like they're the wrong size. They, they don't feel strippy. That one kind of does. I might actually just be like binding them up on the case too. And just that one feels weird for whatever reason. I'm not going to push my luck with it because I don't really think I have to. I do have a whole kit of much higher quality hardware sitting next to me, but I'm just trying to use everything that came with stuff just to keep the cost down. Because I think only the people that, you know, really don't have much money to spend would be the people interested in a setup like this anyway. So I think rather than find out for sure what's wrong with this, I'm just going to leave well enough alone. Those three screws are going to be plenty to hold it in. I don't feel a need to potentially put a bunch of metal shavings inside this power supply by knocking a burr out of that hole or whatever. So we are going to say that's good. So our next move is going to be to take our ATX power adapter, plug it into the ATX cord. And by the way, I'm not going to worry uh, much at all about cable management here, because this is all coming right back out as soon as this video is done. I take it back. I'm going to worry about it a little bit because I think I can. Yeah, I've actually got the ATX wire run out the back here, but this big knot, I don't know if it'll clear the side cover and I don't want to make myself that much trouble. So we're going to leave it alone. It is worth mentioning that the motherboard is now counter to any way I've secured it against gravity and it hasn't fallen out, so that's good. That is to say the case is upside down right now. So scratch my hopes of cable management. Plug him in there. I'll well, probably can do a little bit to help myself, I suppose. GPU power that we don't need for the card we have. It's our CPU that we only need half of. And this connector does divorce, but I'm not sure how. So I'm just gonna plug him half in. There we go. And I'm also not going to mess with hooking up that case fan because I don't want to buy the power adapters to do it. So I am just going to reinstall the Dell fan shroud if it'll fit. I'm pretty sure it will. Oh, it's so close. Ah, so close. If I took this fan out, the shroud would fit. I think if you really wanted to do this, you would be better off to buy the power adapter to adapt the motherboard pin header style to just Molex connector and have that fan run rather than the shroud. I'm going to do neither because this isn't going to stay together this all that long. But I will try to make things modestly neat. The Commeep adapter came with a Velcro. Let's see if I can use it to help me wrangle. Alrighty. I think the next quick thing I'm going to do is just get my Blu-ray drive in. This case uses like a quick attach system. So they're like just these rails that you turn and they unlock. And I've already popped the slot cover out, which was kind of fun on this case, but whatever. He fits. You just need to get one of the holes lined up. So that can engage it. That's interesting. This one just on its own doesn't really like turning. There, I guess it's just a little stiff. <laughs> awesome. Fix that in a minute. Right now we'll just steal a different one. <laughs> there, that's how it's supposed to work. All right, good grief. With that in there, we can just barely, barely get a SATA power cable in here past this card reader get it plugged into the drive. There we go. You can see it just fits. So next step is say the data cable. There we go. And I'm going to pick either the black or white connector on the board, not the blue one, because the blue one is for the hard drive. There we go. Speaking of hard drive caddy. This is not the best caddy system I've ever seen, but it works. This has little pegs that align on the screw holes for the drive. You kind of have to spring the caddy to get the, to get both sides of it in. There we go. There we go. I think the drives actually want to go the other way in this case. So we got to plug it in from the opposite side. Somewhere like that. As such, a 90 degree SATA data cable would be nice right there. I'm not sure if I got one laying around. I do not. So we're just going to pretend I do and probably just leave this case side off. Yeah, it's definitely going to want a 90 to actually get the side on. In fact, it wants a 90 so hard that I am just going to order one. 
But let's button up the rest of what we can while we're here. Is going to want SATA power as well. So we'll just fish one through right there. And all of these are pretty nicely low profile, so shouldn't be a big problem there. In fact, maybe I'll use one deeper on the chain so I can plug more of that wire in up there. Stuff these dudes in there like so. Our Wi-Fi antennas are still sticky from Dell. I'm just gonna go ahead and stick them, stick-ish them, right there in that drive bay. So they are now just hanging out there. Just to try and appease some of you, this is still gonna be horrible. We will throw a zip tie on these just to hang on to them for a little bit. So for better or worse, this is what we got for right now. I will go order that SATA data cable I need so we can get the hard drive plugged in correctly. And then we'll power the thing up. And if we did this right, it shouldn't even know anything changed. In the couple days it's gonna take for that data cable to come, I'm also gonna leave it sitting upright so gravity is fighting our board mounting the whole time and we'll see if it falls out. And my parts have come from the Amazon. Got our 90 degree SATA cable. And also because I heard your collective outrage, I got a power adapter for the fan. The first thing to do is just plug the fan in, because why not? And get him plugged in over here. Sometimes these Molex AT style power connectors are a little fidgety. The pins in them are sometimes a little fun to get lined up. You gotta jiggle with them a little. What's interesting is this one only actually has two wires in it, but it's got all four pins. There we go. Connected. And I noticed after I connected this that some of these pins were kind of sticking out. So I just took a small screwdriver and I just made sure they were pushed back in. And these two over here are dead just because there's no wire in them. Just to make sure that never becomes an issue, I'm just gonna go over it with some electrical tape. I read reviews of various adapters for the fan, and it sounded like none of them were all that great. This one was probably about as good as it gets, and it was cheap, so that's what I went with. But a little bit of electrical tape will just make sure that never becomes a problem for us. I'm gonna drive plugged into our SATA cord. So nothing too rocket sciencey here. There we go. I think I'm just going to feed him right through the same hole we've got our power going through. And since I should be done over here, I'm going to go ahead and put that case side back on, just while it's on my mind, just to make sure it's going to go back on for one thing. And this is just like the Dell case, by the way. There are little tabs that engage little windows. Might be easier to do this with it laying on its face. All right. Yep, slid right on, no problem. Grab a couple thumb screws, because these are not captive. All righty. Now we just need to connect it to the motherboard and we want it plugged into the blue connector because that should be our quote unquote fast one. And we're done. Certainly looks like a bit of a mess, but it's gonna be functional. Case swap complete. So now it's time to get the thing plugged in, make sure no sparks shoot out of anything. And then I think we're gonna call it. Alrighty, so I have the power switch on the power supply itself turned on. So I'm just gonna reach back and plug it in. And if everything goes well, it should just take off and boot up. See our fan back there is going, I can hear my hard drives, my optical drives blinking at me. She'd be opening and ejecting, that's good. It took a little bit to boot up and it's because it's upset about something. I didn't uh, take any particular precautions to make sure I didn't like short out the CMOS battery or anything like that. So that might be what it's offended about. It says we need to run the BIOS setup. So, so much for it won't even know anything changed. But in all reality, I have spent like three weeks doing this on and off as parts came and everything. So actually, let's go to diagnostics. Holy crap, 10 minutes. That might have been a mistake. So we came to the end of it. And in all reality, that took about four minutes. Looks like everything's fine. I am not going to go advanced test. So I'm gonna hit exit and I'm hoping that doesn't exit me out of the BIOS setup, but I bet it does. But I'm gonna need to reprogram our power button behavior. So it's probably gonna lose that. So I'm just gonna start hammering F12. Hopefully it'll just let me right back in. Actually looking at it, it has powered itself down. And I can tell that because the CPU fan stopped spinning and also a side effect I didn't expect, it's through this front mesh, I can actually see the LEDs on the motherboard. So I can actually still see the power LED and such. But now our move is I've gotta get in here and hit the power button that we just zip tied in there to actually turn the thing back on. So I guess I'm glad we went through the trouble. And this shouldn't be something you would have to do very often, if ever. Oh, there's power button. CPU fan just started spinning. Start hammering F12 so I can get back in the BIOS. There we go. BIOS setup, power management, or was it? Yeah, AC recovery. Power on. So this is the option again, where when power is removed, it will boot right back up. 
I think that's the only setting we should have needed to change. So now it's just going to boot Windows, or we hope it does. And that is what happened. And there you can see our LEDs within the case. Kind of an unintended neat thing. And Windows knows no difference of what's going on here. So I'm just going to shut it down. And once again, I can tell that it's actually shut down because no LED lights visible and our CPU fan stopped. Our case fan, is, since it's running off the PSU, isn't going to stop. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to reach back and flip the switch on the PSU. And you can see that's killed our case fan. So that should have also killed all the power to the motherboard. So when I flick it back on, it should just boot up now. And we'll watch for our lights. Yep, I can see them. The light on the, the light ring on the camera has got us messed up. There we've got our CPU fan running. Everything's good. And with that, I believe this thing has officially earned its title of the Dell from Hell. Short of your individual hardware upgrade choices, so a better graphics card or more RAM or a different SSD or any of that stuff, I'm pretty confident in saying this is as far as you can upgrade a Dell 3880 while still even pretending to call it a Dell 3880. We'll give it one more power up just for the funsies. Off she goes. Because after this, the next step of the Dell upgrade is to finish the undelling of the Dell. So everything I just did in this video, I now get to undo. Just yank her all right back out of there. And I will repeat again that I think if you have the budget to do it, that is the way to go. Just do the motherboard, the case, and probably the power supply all at the same time. But if you don't, you certainly can wiggle and weasel your way through the back door and get this to happen regardless. However, this turned out a lot better than I anticipated it would. Short of losing the front I.O., which I knew was going to happen, and we, we could, if we worked hard enough, replicate. This thing, it has its full functionality. You can access both card slots. You've got the full rear I.O., whole bunch of drive base, all that good stuff. So this turned out awesome. At least I think it turned out awesome. Speaking of turned out, that's all I got for this one. I appreciate you guys stopping in and joining me for it. And we'll catch you on the next one. I'm Max, that's Saddington Bear, and we make videos like this all the time. Here are a couple links to some other videos we've made, and we really appreciate you guys stopping in.